Hi guys, Mrs. Palumbo here. I just wanted to talk to you about the celestial sphere. You've read about it in the content and I just wanted to show you um, a real one here. So remember that a celestial sphere is a tool that astronomers use to kind of ha help them map um, sky objects uh, in terms of where they're located. Just like we use latitude and longitude to mark locations of cities, we can use declination and right ascension to mark locations of stars in our night sky. So just to make sure you understand the key points, if we take the Earth's equator and extend it out towards the sky, we end up with the celestial equator, and I'm running my finger along that right here. Um, Everything above the celestial equator makes up our northern sky. Anything below the celestial equator uh, makes up our southern sky. A few vocabulary words uh, that you need to know. As I mentioned already, declination and right ascension. These are two measurements that astronomers use to describe the location of stars. Let's start with uh, declination. Okay, Think of declination like your latitude lines. And so, like latitude, latitude measures north and south of the equator. Declination does the same thing, but instead of saying north and south, astronomers use positive signs for anything in the northern sky and negative signs for any, anything in the southern sky. Um, a, a key point that I want you to be aware of, um, when looking for Polaris, for people in the north, the height of Polaris, which is the North Star, the height of that star above our horizon is equal to our latitude. This means that for us in London, Ontario, its latitude is about 43 degrees north. So when looking for Polaris, you should be looking 43 degrees above the horizon. Okay, um, that will help you tremendously in trying to locate Polaris. Polaris, of course, sits directly above the North Pole, and I forgot to mention, if we take the Earth's geographical North Pole and extend it upwards um, towards the celestial sphere, it actually hits a star called the North Star, also known as Polaris. If we do the same for the South Pole, it does not hit any star in particular, okay? Um, the other term, right ascension. So, right ascension is like your longitude lines. And the zero point for longitude is the prime meridian, which passes through Greenwich, England. The, the zero point for right ascension happens to be the vernal equinox, which is our spring equinox. And so that's where the sun uh, crosses the celestial equator, okay? In terms of measuring right ascension, um, astronomers do so in time units. So the distance between each longitude line is about 15 degrees, and that's how much Earth rotates in an hour. Understanding that Earth completes one spin in 24 hours, and each spin is 360 degrees, mathematically that works out to 15 degrees per hour. So if a star is um, located two hours, if its right ascension is two hours, that means 30 degrees in longitude language. Okay, um, I think that's it. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me. Um, I'm also going to come on and talk to you about the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. And so I'll deconstruct that for you and talk about all the stellar properties that we use um, in looking at the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. Take care. Bye.